about 45 minutes, and throughout the performance I will ask you to open and close your eyes. And so it's nice if you pay attention to my cues. We're going to meditate on George Orwell's novel 1984 together tonight. I will soon ask you to close your eyes and when I do I want you to focus on the processes that take place in your inner. And remember that there's no right and there's no wrong and that everyone's experience will be quite different. The images that are evoked in your inner, inner will surely differ quite a lot from the person next to you. And try to pay special attention to the images that flow through your mind that you like and stay with those. Let those that do not interest you effortlessly pass you by like the landscape when you travel on a train. We're not in control of the images that appear in our minds, but we can choose which ones we give energy and which ones we simply let, by, let go by. So find a comfortable position, breathe calmly and close your eyes as soon as you wish. So please close your eyes. Most of the creative process that eventually became the novel 1984 took place on the island of Jura in the Inner Hebrides in Scotland. Very few people live on the island. Mountains rise out of the sea and very little grows. The wind blows strong, the sun rarely shows its face, it often rains. Orwell's writing, Orwell was writing in a solitary house called Barn Hill, an eight kilometer walk to the closest neighboring house. Barn Hill is a large, rustic, typical British brick house painted white. There's a low hill on each side of the building and a magnificent view of the sea. Keep your eyes closed and imagine that you are at Barn Hill. You stand on one of the hills and look down on the house below. There's a strong wind, but you are well dressed and the air is refreshing. It is a bright day and you stand motionless at the top of the stairs that lead down to the house and you look at your feet. You know that there are 25 steps that lead down to the house. Let me count for you as you take each step down the stairs. 25, 24, 23, 22. Feel how your body gets heavier. 21, 20, 19. You're feeling so incredibly relaxed now. 18, 17, 16, twisting and turning. 
15, 14, 13, 12, relaxing deeper and deeper. 11, 10, 9, 8, dreaming and drifting. 7, 6, 5, drifting off. 4, 3, 2, further and further down. One and zero. You're now standing so that you're well protected from the wind and everything is calm. Your body is filling up with gentle satisfaction and energy as you walk towards the main entrance of the house. The door to the house is within reach and your pace becomes slower and so does your pulse and your breathing. Stop in front of the door and look at it in detail, but don't open it yet. Your eyes are closed in this world, but I want you to imagine that you close them at Barnhill as well. Once your eyes are shut, you can reach out for the handle. What does it feel like? Take a moment to feel the handle in your hand. When you feel ready, open the door and step into quite a different universe. It is warm, humid, but still comfortable. You're safe and you can scent deliciously smelling tropical plants. Keep your eyes closed in this world and open them at Barnhead. Once you open them, you realize that you're back on top of the hill, overlooking the house. But everything has changed. The world is warm, calm and green. Lush Burmese jungle spreads out around you. You notice the calm water in the distance looks more like a slow, majestic river. Great, impressive trees grow on either side of you and provide you with shade from the warm sun. A loved one stands next to you and smiles at you with profound affection. Your loved one nods that you should walk down the steps again and counts. 25, 24, 23, 22. Feel how your body gets heavier and heavier. 21, 20, 19, 20. You're feeling so incredibly relaxed now. 18, 17, 16, twisting and turning. 15, 14, 13, 12. Relaxing deeper and deeper. 11, 10, 9, 8. Dreaming and drifting. 7, 6, 5. Drifting on. 4, 3, 2. Further and further down. 1 and 0. You are standing on a jungle path and you feel the natural beauty entering into your body and filling your body with energy. 
As you continue walking, you become aware of an animal peering at you from behind the trees. You stop to watch it, and it looks back at you calmly. You look at each other with peaceful curiosity, and your breathing is synchronized. What does the animal look like? What kind of movements does it engage in? The animal looks down and walks away, and you feel energized, as if the animal's strength has become a part of the cells of your body. You continue walking and see the lush forest on one side and the garden in front of you. You can see the plants that you planted, and you see how they grow in great health and abundance. Now let your mind roam free and enjoy the music with your eyes still closed.
take your time and make your way towards the door. Now put your hand on the handle but don't open the door yet. Once you open the door you will be back in Helsinki. But before you do so, scan your body and feel how it has changed. Make sure that you feel that you're ready to come back before you open the door and open your eyes. Take your time, there's no rush. You can open your eyes whenever you feel like it. There are virtually no descriptions of nature in 1984. All focus remains on the interactions of human beings. Would it be possible to set the novel in Burma where Orwell lived for five years? Could Orwell's visions of a dark dictatorship be played out against the backdrop of exotic forests full of life and peopled by mindful Buddhists. Or is the cold, grey, rationalist London a requirement for the story to unfold? In the novel's third part, O'Brien, an inner party member, tortures Winston Smith, the novel's main character. O'Brien says that the party is in the process of abolishing the orgasm and that the party neurologists are already working on it. In other words, the party's goal is to cut off every citizen of Oceania from the nature that is inside his or her own body. While torturing Winston, O'Brien also denies geological history. He says that the world is as old as the party. Nothing existed before the party and nothing will exist after. Winston says that dinosaurs and mastodons have roamed the earth, and O'Brien asks if he's ever seen the remains of such animals, and Winston goes silent. Geological history is so much more than giant reptiles, massive hairy elephant looking beasts. Since all living things have developed from the same origins, we also share many evolutionary traits with all other life forms on Earth. Think about your organs and the thousands of processes that keep Keep us alive, breathing, heartbeat, digestion, regulation of temperature, and the immune system that fights off intruders. All of it connects you and me and everybody else to the history of life on this planet. But also the nervous system and the hormones that produce your thoughts and your feelings. In other words, our evolutionary past is a bridge between you, me, Winston and O'Brien.
so what about you and me? How do we feel our evolutionary history express itself in our bodies? Who or what was it inside you that sparkled the images inside your mind when you imagined that you were at Barnhill? But it's not only us, it's our environment as well. Every breath you take is a reminder that cyanobacteria tirelessly for hundreds of millions of years filled the atmosphere with oxygen. The rhythmic motions of your ribcage, your diaphragm, your lungs that allow you to breathe connect you to all other vertebrates that live on this planet and over 400 million years of evolution. We all know that breathing is an automatic process. You breathe naturally when you're fast asleep. But you can also consciously influence your breath. In meditation, breath is used to influence the body and its thoughts to work differently. Could we imagine a mindful Burmese Buddhist who uses meditation as a strategy against an Asian version of Big Brother or an Asian version of O'Brien? Let us look at some images, breathe together and use our breathing as a tool to sense our bodies. Continue to focus on your breathing and how the breath, music and images become one, like raindrops falling into a river and keep your eyes open and peeled on the moving images.
Close your eyes again. As you close your eyes, imagine that you return to Barnhill. You stand in front of the door of the house again. Imagine that you hold the handle in your hand. Feel the physical shape of the handle and how it rests in your hand. When you feel ready, open the door and step into the fresh jungle odors and feel them wash over you.
Keep your eyes closed in this world, but open them at Barnhill. When you open them, you realize that you're back on top of the hill again. Everything is warm, comfortable, just like before. You become aware of a friendly alien life form that is communicating with you. It only wants what is best for you and it's deeply curious about humans and humanity. Its voice is calm and it understands you perfectly. The alien takes out a worn copy of 1984 and flips through it and then asks you about the book. The alien is particularly curious about the thought police, thoughts in general and your thoughts in particular. As you walk down the stairs towards the house, it asks you, where do your thoughts come from? How do thoughts appear in your mind? How long do they stay? And where do they go once you're done with them? Below the stairs, the alien asks you if you think that Orwell really expected the world to become the way he'd formulated in the novel. And do you think that the novel describes the world that you live in today, at least in parts? You wander around the garden and eventually you turn towards the door and you both hold the handle together, each getting ready to return to its respective worlds. Do you mind if I ask you one last question? The alien asks. It finds it fascinating how humans think the same thought over and over and over again. Especially before we go to bed or if we're upset about something or with someone. The same thoughts keeps churning even if there's no progress. It seems that the alien understands your point of view on the subject by simply looking at you and then it says, If I could make your repetitive thoughts go away forever, would you like me to do that? Or would you rather like to keep them? Before you can really answer, the alien turns the handle and disappears 
with a low popping sound that leaves you alone holding the candle. Feel free to turn the handle when you feel that you're ready to return to this world. When you do, you can also open your eyes gently. But as always, there's no harm. Take your time to return and open your eyes whenever you feel that you're ready for it.